so welcome to my channel this is Miriam the Explorer and today's video I okay I want to just be real so as a woman <laughs> my visitor came through and I was like oh so right now my energy is a bit kind of low if you know what I mean so y'all gonna love this look okay y'all gonna love her and yeah because the time when I was brainstorming about this topic of today I was really excited but now you know she came through and I was like, well, and there's some noises in my microwave. I apologize, but I forgot to take out my chicken breast last night. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing my personal um, views and opinions of the movie that I watched over last weekend. It was called um, Moving On. It's on Hulu. And um, Jane Fonda and her... I, I forgot her name. Jane Fonda, and I feel like her other co-star name is Lily, But... They also was in a show on Netflix of pretty much they found out their soon-to-be ex-husband were gay and they was having a long affair with each other. I don't remember <laughs> the title of the show. I even watched it till season three and me as being a Gemini, I just got tired of watching it. So um, it's a really nice show cute show but the reason you know but um so this video could be a little bit triggering if you are a victim of trauma um so but once again i am Miriam the explorer okay and i explore life beauty and wellness and also at the same time i am we are exploring who i am on this long journey because i feel like i lost myself and i'm trying to find my old self back and y'all can come follow me on this journey too or if you are on that journey we can do it together all right so But anyway, um, so yeah, the reason that I watch that movie is because, spoiler, if you want to go watch a movie, but I watched a trailer and Jane Fonda character, I think her character name was Claire, Claire went to her best friend's funeral and she told to her best friend own widow you know, husband, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill you. And that already attract my interest because I am about that life. But I'm watching the trailer. I assume the husband did something bad to her best friend who passed away. But I was wrong. Her, her best friend husband is a piece of shit. But, um, yeah, let me see my notes. Um, so pretty much with having to watch a movie, her best friend, husband, the best one passed away, rape her when she was in her 30s 
And at that time, she was married. So the way it happened, because her best friend called her, was like, hey, I'm out of town, and I don't think my husband can help himself. So this happened around the 70s and 80s. For men who can't help themselves without your wife to feed you, are you, are you even a human? Because I don't want to compare humans to animal, but if a lion, a male lion, can fetch food for his family, why can y'all help yourself? But, but yeah. So her best friend called her for like, hey, just please make him some food because you know these men can't even help themselves, blah, blah, blah. So that's what Clara did. She made him food and she went to the house. By that time, the rapist, okay, was a bit drunk and he calmed her. That way, he he calmed her, and from that, it really affected Claire throughout all the years. Obviously, in the movie, they didn't really show of the incident that happened. Um, now, me being a viewer, would I be interested? Maybe not, because that would probably trigger me. But um. It was very intense, but they in a movie they didn't show about I don't know, they didn't really show how was the friendship between Claire and the other best friend who told her to bring food to her husband's house. Because in the movie we saw that she divorced her husband. She was very distant from her other friend. And she was so into of taking pictures and she stopped pursuing that route. So I'm I I don't know. I am a bit curious of did her friend did her best friend ever knew that her husband did that to her? Or was Claire was still best friend with her despite what happened? So that's why Claire told that man in the trailer, first thing, like, hey, how you doing? I'm going to kill you. Because sis really went and <laughs> tried to buy the gun, but she wasn't found, she wasn't found to stay to get a gun. Then her other friend is trying her best, like, to, I mean, her her other friend didn't even believe her. She, she was like, you like to start things and do not to finish it. But she was really serious. She was like, I'm really going to kill him. And her other friend, I guess, had a romance with the best friend who passed away. And first of all, I didn't want to say, like, this movie is centered around when they're, like, in their late age. Like, 70 or 80 or 90-something. So, these are, like, older old women. And for her to say that she's going to kill this man... I don't blame her. I don't blame her. But from watching the movie, um, even though we couldn't see the scene of the attack or what was her relationship or that best friend, I wish we could have seen a little bit more of how she was after, after the attack. Because even her because even her ex husband he was like you just left and she just left him she couldn't even pursue her hobbies anymore like with facing that trauma i feel like she lost herself a bit and i feel like that's something I can also relate as a trauma survivor is like 
certain things in your life happens and you just lose yourself. Um, obviously, I'm a childhood trauma survivor, so um, I wasn't, I couldn't do the hobbies that I used to like to do. Um, and I don't know. I feel like with trauma survivor, it's really different. I feel like each of us deal with trauma very differently. Like for her, she just stopped being close to people who truly love her. She escaped. She escaped from her desire and dream. I can relate to that. But for being a childhood uh, survivor, I feel like I lean into... I used to lean into a lot of people pleasing. Um, I used to try to pretend who I am so other people can like me in the past. I don't do that shit anymore. That's why I don't got no friends. But um, I will in the future, but not right now. But um, I don't know. I was a little bit feisty, so it's a lot of digging to do. But yeah, I, I just find it very sad. Like when you go through that, it's like people who cause trauma to other people they just make us lose ourselves, which is why I named my channel Miriam the Explorer. Um, cause I'm trying to explore who I am again, even though, yeah, what happened is happening, but I still have those scars. So I'm trying to find like who I am again. Well, nobody told me mom be this, do this when nobody telling me what to do is in my own terms, even though while finding yourself again, it won't be cute. Which is fine, but that's who I am. Um, but... I'm just gonna read it. No. But overall, like, I'm watching the movie. She even came close to kill him i feel like the scene that really was very shocking and really made me really think to the core is when she had the fire flare gun or something that you shoot up in the sky or something because that's what her other friend gave to her and i feel like her friend gave that to her because she never liked him because she was she was in love with her best friend yeah and he he was a bit a little bit homophobic calling her a dyke so um but um so there was a scene of how claire was ready to shoot him she was like, i'm gonna shoot you i'm gonna shoot you and he was like no you're not and then she was like you know what you did to me and then he was like i did nothing and it's she pulled out the flare gun and she was like, you know what you did. Like she went to the event talking about pushing my head to the floor. And I won't go into details, but it was a little bit graphic. And he was like, I was drunk. It was a mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake and all this shit. And then she got really mad. Like, I'm going to kill you then, of course. The abusers start getting a little bit feisty, like, like you're not gonna shoot me, all this stuff out of nowhere. This coward went have a heart attack. And you know what clear it is? Guess what clear it is? She called an ambulance. She she called an ambulance and then her other best friend was like, You need to stop doing this. You're not gonna look cute in <laughs> jail. You're too old for that. But Claire being stubborn, like me, 
but she went to the hospital and no sh she went to the he she went to his hospital room she opened the door this man laying down like a coward shit and then she went and talked to him again and she was like you know what you did and he was like, i'm getting tired of your shenanigans and do you know what she did you know what she did she took the pillow and started smuggling him. And let me tell you something. If her other best friend didn't come through, she would could have really killed that man. So with that happening, she just feels so exhausted afterwards. The best friend was like, you know what? I'm going to take a bus because you're just doing a whole lot. whole lot. Then... I don't know. I'm trying to think. What happened to Claire after after that happened? I don't even feel like I have ADHD because I don't be remembering. I don't remember, but like, so. And the other thing, she tried to visit her best, her other best friend again because they just was you know having that fight whatever and then because her other best friend would stay on the um nursing home so she went there to visit her best friend while her other best friend was talking to the parents because the parents were telling her to leave their son alone because when the son come over to nursing home she'd be letting him dress up wear her earrings and they'd be having fun and then the parents was like, you need to leave my son alone. And then she told the boy, like, I wish I was your grandmother because I would have loved you regardless of who you are. And then Claire came through. I think she had a pie or something that she wanted to apologize. Then, this, then the other parent, dog, came and jumped on her. So she had to be taken to the hospital to leave her other friend took her to the hospital and whatever. And then, you know, they're just driving around inside a hospital garage. Cause these are old <laughs> women who, I don't want to say a stereotype, but you know, old women don't be really good at driving. I mean, old people, they be struggling with their driving skills. So she was driving around and then at one point, her other friend had to push the brake because they almost hit that abuser. The abuser leaned over the, on the car because he was panicked. And he was a not y'all again. And he went in calling them whores, bitches, and all this shit. So he, he cussed them out, right? While Lily was telling Claire, like, it's all right, it's okay, just let him walk away. Then this big old truck came out of nowhere, hit him. Boom, like, he hit him. He was dead on the scene. <laughs> That's not funny. Then the truck drivers came out like, oh my God, no. Yeah, he was like, oh my God, oh my goodness. And when I say this, this woman was so delusional and didn't give a damn, I was still fucking sure. They was having fun. And then Lily, 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 I'm probably, probably that's not her name, but the other best friend was telling Claire, like, you see, you see, sometimes you just, you just don't have to take an action. You just allow your universe <laughs> Take on, take control of that, because he's dead now on the scene in a hospital garage that he was in. He's there, and at the funeral, the funeral was chaotic. Like they didn't wear black, none of that. They was taking picture and there by his casket, like, and then somebody said like, "This is so inappropriate," and there was a. Uh, Oh, go for you. Go for you, bitch. But I know it was long, but what I'm trying to say is that this is about to be a long video. I apologize. 
what I'm, what, I'm, what am I trying to say is that as being a trauma survivor, I always have this talk for payback. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I always be like, you know, I be like in a waiting stance, like I just can't wait to see the payback. I just can't wait to see the karma. I just can't wait to see all these people who did bad shit to me fall on the ground and crumble. So when I saw that scene of him, of the abuse getting hit with the truck, it just spoke to me like, sometimes you just got to let that shit. I don't want to say to let go of what you went through, but let go of the anger. Let go of the need to have revenge. Like, let go of that control. You know, I feel like that scene really spoke to me because I be, <laughs> I be wanting to have revenge. Okay. I be wanting to have revenge on a lot of people who really did me so fucking wrong. But I realized, you know, seeing clear going through that is not worth it. It's not worth it. Like, she really lost herself. And, and I also lost myself too because I lost of who who I was, I lost the creativity that I had as a kid, I lost all that humor energy that little mom had. So with that scene, it just taught me like, hey, it is time to release, you know, release the revenge. I mean, I don't want to release the anger because I have every right to be angry like you do, but don't keep the anger inside of you all the time, though. Because I also how Claire was acting a little bit crazy out here, but and it's time to move on, you know. Because even at the end, the first picture, because you know, her hobby was taking picture. But she took that picture with her other best friend. And I feel like with watching that movie, it just told me like, I don't know. I don't know who's watching this. And if you're not religious, totally fine. I'm not I'm not gonna hold that against you. I right? but for me, I'm I'm gonna just let God, my angel, the universe get control of that you know because what happened to me um it was really fucked up you know it was really sad but i'm a i know i know one wasn't say what we missed but i'm a i'm gonna let god hold, hold my imaginary gun you know i'm gonna let god hold my bullets and God can do whatever he wants to do with it. But for me, I'm in this journey to move on and find myself. Like to, to connect to my dream, to connect to my passion, to connect to my hobbies again, you know, to connect to what I could have been because I lost that part. <sighs> But, yeah, that scene, him getting ran over, getting hit by the car, I was like, you know what? But at least, at least she got to witness it. Um, But for me, it's fine if I don't witness my abusers, the wrongdoers, or the karma. But for me, I got, I got other shit to do. I got other shit to do. I am, I am the star in the making, <laughs> so I got shit to do, so I'm gonna let God and my angels hold, hold my imaginary bullets and my gun, and then 
when they do decide to shake the table up, I'm going to be in a different time frame and a different lifestyle. But, oof, get it hot. But that's all I wanted to say. So, if you are a trauma survivor, I would highly suggest you to watch the video because it's not as triggering. It doesn't have something to trigger you, but it can teach you something. I mean, to watch a movie. Um, but also, I just, and I also wanted to add like a comment like, I would love to see a movie like this with older black women. Because <sighs> I feel like right now in entertainment, we see more of these movies with older white women and not enough of older black women or other POC, but I would love to see older black women, you know, going to town, going and going over the trauma and what they went through and trying to find themselves. I would love to see this type of content and movie. I feel like it, it is much needed, y'all. It is needed. Especially if y'all put in an African grandmother with that same content. Because, girl, 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 these old black women, they got a story to tell. <laughs> a story to tell, literally. And when I say older black women, I'm saying everybody, black American, African, black African, and by Caribbean, like, if you like this, I'm talking about y'all. Because these older black women, our grandmas, they have a story to tell. And I would love to see that shit in a movie. Because some of them stories, it be sad. It be sad. It don't make no fucking sense. But I would love to see movies like that. I feel like seeing movies like that might probably help the healing process for black women in general. Because, Sha, I come from a Guinean community. It's a lot of our grandmother needs some healing, y'all. A lot of them need some healing because a lot of them I bet you like a lot of them can't even talk about their feelings they can't even talk about their feelings they can't even play wow <laughs> I'm trying not to cry they can't even have fun <sighs> but yeah that's it y'all this video is already long like I said, I probably have ADHD. <laughs> I feel like I do have it because that's why I, that's why I need to write notes because or I'm not gonna remember something. My therapist, my therapist was like, I don't think you have ADHD. I'm like, okay, but just refer me to a psychologist because I need to be diagnosed immediately. Um, but them should be costing money too, so <laughs> I'm probably going to find out I have ADHD maybe when I turn 35, or hopefully by next year, because all this should be expensive, but that's, that's all to say, y'all. Please watch the movie and let me know how you like it. If you did watch it, let me know what is your opinion. I'll talk to you soon. And y'all have a blessed fucking day.